Hi guys, welcome to vlog 26. I know, I've missed two days. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm trying to do a daily vlog every single day. And the reason I want to do it every single day is so that I can give myself something to commit to, right? And I've really enjoyed doing it and it's fantastic. And that's me nearly coming up for, for a month now of doing it. But sometimes these things just come up, which you can't, you can't really get out of. And that's the downside sometimes of having your own business and of being responsible for other people and of being responsible for um, well, an empire, I suppose, <laughs> if you like. Um, when you are the head of your own company and you have more than one company and you have all these uh, businesses going in different directions, your time's not only going to be stretched, but your attention span and your concentration and your ability to even deal with any different situation is going to be really stretched as well and it's just stretched so much that it's squeezed out too much time for a vlog. I do apologise but what I've decided to do tonight which might help get me back in the good books is I'm going to look at three things which have actually came up for me recently and it's three things that I believe have contributed to the last few days not being the best and how if these come up as an entrepreneur how you can overcome them so number one and they're, they're all peas by the way because I know how important it is to get things that rhyme so that you pay attention and remember them okay so three peas right number one procrastination this is the killer there is nothing worse than having that task on your to-do list which just keeps jumping from page to page to page now, I've had a task on my to-do list for about six months and it's a biggie and it's something that if I do it and just get it done, it will propel me instantly straight through to the next stage of business and probably solve nearly every single problem that I'm dealing with right now and I can't get it done and I don't honestly know why I can't get it done. Time isn't uh, an excuse. It um, doesn't cost me anything to do it, it's just my time. It's basically just writing up a document and I've not set aside the correct time to do it. And it's come to a head and now completely bit me in the arse. And um, I've been getting so annoyed at myself over the last two days. And uh, it made me realise that we procrastinate probably sometimes because we don't sometimes want good outcomes. And I know that sounds really weird. Sometimes you don't want things to work out exactly how you've planned it or exactly how you've dreamed it. Because if it does, you need to be ready to take that next step. Maybe there's been a wee bit of me that's been holding back because I'm maybe not ready for the enormousness of what comes next. Maybe that's been it, but that was the past. That's changed now. Coming to Kuwait changes everything like that. And yet anything that you think you can't do, move to a different country, move here. It's it's um, it's a fantastic experience and really makes you think that you can achieve anything. So that task is now getting smashed. Um, so procrastination, that's number one. Don't let it weigh you down. It's an absolute killer. Get up in the morning, put your feet in the ground, do what you said you were going to do, and that's it. You don't have to do anything else that day apart from that, and your day will be a winner. Okay, the second one is preconceived ideas. And this refers to doing build, uh, business in the Middle East in particular. That's my experience of it just now, but it refers to a whole host of things. So before I came out to the Middle East, I was very apprehensive. I was apprehensive about a lot of things. I had a lot of preconceived ideas about how I would be treated as a, as a woman, how I would be able to form business relationships, how I would be able to come across in a meeting and get my point across, um, how, how I would have to dress, you know, things like that. And... To be honest, the people who advise you don't really do much to put your mind at rest, right? So you get given these lists of things that you can and can't do and don't do this and don't do that and don't offend anybody and... Oh, I'm scared to breathe. And it's so funny because I now have a very, very good friend who's Kuwaiti and um, when I tell her the list of things that I get given to come over, she's like, I don't even know what half of that stuff is. You know, she's like, and the other half, it's not that you defend somebody, it's just here's the reasons why. Um... So anyway, I had these preconceived ideas before I came out and I was a bit, as I say, apprehensive. Now, one of those ideas and one of those notions that I'd got in my brain was I wouldn't be respected in a business meeting because I was a woman and I would have to fight really, really, really hard to get what I wanted. 
kind of used to doing that anyway, so it was fine. But I was in a very unusual situation a couple of weeks ago where we've taken on our first Amy Apartments. They are amazing, right? And I knew they were amazing, and they looked amazing, and we get a great price. And the guy said he was going to do all these things. We, we asked for a bathroom to be ripped out and replaced with a wet room. And he said he was going to do it, and I was like, God, this is great. And we got the keys a couple of days after we were due to move in. And there was a bit of an issue with who was signing and, and everything like that. And anyway, when we moved in, the stuff that we'd wanted hadn't been done. Now, this happens all the time in the UK. All the time. All the time agents promise the earth or landlords promise the earth and it doesn't get done. And we're always left in a situation where we just go back and say, that's not been done. Could you do it? And yeah, they fix it. But because I had these preconceived ideas of how business was done in the Middle East, I attached all these other significances to it and I thought oh my god maybe they're never going to do it maybe I've now committed to this contract and I'm not going to get this thing I wanted bear in mind we're talking about the difference between a bathroom and a wet room it wasn't that there was no furniture or that there was like you know no light fittings or no ceiling it's a gorgeous flat it was literally just a small thing but I panicked and I panicked because I wasn't sure what to do I didn't know how to approach a challenge in a new place and I didn't want to come across as this uh, disrespectful, you know, foreigner, I suppose, kind of. And actually what happened was when I went to the guy, he got it fixed. I had two, a team of two in my flat the entire next day, getting everything fixed. They fixed it in all the other flats as well. Trip to Ikea and it was done. And I seen him today and I, I apologised because I did say to him, I said, you know, I, I just assumed I kind of instantly jumped to, I'm in a new country, I'm in the Middle East, everybody's warned me about doing business in new countries and make sure you get everything right in and make sure it's the, the, the law and everything like that. And that re- nearly ruined a really good business relationship. There will always be people who try to con you. There will always be people who try to rip you off. But they're in your home market as well. They're, that's just people, just because you go abroad, regardless of where you go, this is not a you know, Kuwait or Middle East thing, regardless of where you go, because you're doing business in a different country, don't assume that they're not as transparent in their in their business dealings, um, because actually what's happened is, I've went in there assuming that the standard will be, well I suppose the, the response to issues is maybe going to be less because I didn't have anything written down in the contract and you know I, I maybe messed up and I maybe forgot to put it across properly, maybe you couldn't understand my accent, all these other things, all these things that you wouldn't think back home because you're so familiar with the laws and you know where you stand and you're so familiar with the way business is done. And uh, it really taught me that whatever you come up against, just deal with it how you would deal with it. Deal with it how you would deal with it, with it in your home market and apply that to international markets. Like we said before, don't be something you're not and don't attach significance to something that's not. Um, and Hamid, again, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so the next one is, next three Ps. So we've got procrastination, perceived ideas, and petted lip. I've had a bit of a petted lip this weekend. Um, so we're in the property industry and there's a lot of people in the property industry who don't really subscribe to the same standards and ethics and ideals and values and everything like that that we do and that other people we work with do as well. And what happens is it becomes very hard it becomes very hard to make money because we spend most of our money trying to keep people happy and rectify other people's mistakes. And this comes in a variety of ways. For example, we take on flats in the UK from landlords who don't do any work to them. Um, We have properties through agents who don't really do any work to them. It's a very, very small percentage though, because mostly all of our private landlords are absolutely fantastic and we love dealing with them and they have immaculate homes. There's also a lot of... um, people who we come up against when we're bidding for properties or we're putting in offers or we're trying to um, get out the message about what we do um, in terms of the new developments and stuff. And it's annoying because yes, we're all in this to make money and everybody's got to 
do that, that's fine, I totally understand that, you've, you've got to make a living, but be a person first, you know, think about who's living in that house, and don't just do things for the bottom line, and I have had this philosophy since I started in business, and it's always so corny, but Gary Vaynerchuk says it best, it's people before profits, and it's legacy before currency, and I've been subscribing to that for three years, and it's not made me any money. <laughs> It's progressed our business a lot, but I feel as if it's more the hard work that's progressed the business. I feel as if every week we're in a fight with somebody about, but we are doing it right, but we are trying to be genuine, but we're not lying to you, but we're trying our best. And every week it feels as if we just come up against people going, but how can you be that genuine? But nobody's that, that um, nobody's not self-involved. Um, and you go one or two ways when you come up against this. You decide I'm just going to be like everybody else and I'm just going to chase a quick buck and I'm going to be, what is it they call it, uh, penny wise and pound daft, something like that. Or you think, you know what, I'm going to stick to my guns and no matter how much shit gets thrown at me, I'm just going to deal with it and I'm going to be me and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be genuine and we're going to be upfront and we're going to be customer service orientated and we are going to give everything into making this an internationally recognised brand. And when I start to feel like that again, things start to go okay. <laughs> so don't let these things, three things get in the way or halt your progress or even hold you back for a minute of your day. Don't procrastinate. Don't have any perceived ideas about business situations or any other situation that you're uncomfortable with. Just go in and be yourself and the outcome will be whatever outcome you desire it to be. And don't get a petted lip. Just keep doing what you're doing. Or if you're doing it wrong, change what you're doing. But let everybody else be everybody else. Be you, be good at it, be honest, be genuine. And I really believe that good things will come of that. I'm going to be doing this vlog for a year, so maybe you could look back in a year and see if I've been proved right. <laughs> and if I've not, just delete this episode entirely. Okay, right, cheers guys. I hope that's made up for the lack of me for two whole days. And I can promise I will now be back, okay? Good night, see you later.